As usual, we deliberate on the week's top developments and what a week it has been. A lot has been ongoing. Most recently, we had President William Ruto defend his foreign travels, this even as he was under fire from the opposition in a section of Kenyans over the cost to the taxpayers. Not just that, we found out that the government is broke. Those are not my words, but straight from the horse's mouth, this time being the Treasury Cabinet Secretary Njoguna Ndongo. But at the same time, a bill has been introduced in Parliament that seeks to introduce, among other things, the position of Chief Administrative Secretary. So it's been a busy week. Allow me to introduce my esteemed panelists before we get into the talking points that we'll be dissecting. I'm joined by Desma Smokua, Political Risk Analyst. Asante sana for your time. Karibu. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And Hezbo Nawila as well, Communication Strategist. It's been a while. Great to see you. Karibu. Sandy Sana, good to see you too. It's good to see the blackout hasn't affected both of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us. Let's perhaps begin with the latest from Ruto's foreign trips. And the much questioned foreign trips by the president have attracted ridicule um, from a section of Kenyans. In the inaugural year, the president and his deputy embarked on extensive series of trips between july 1st 2022 and june 30th 2023 51 trips to 34 countries incurring a staggering expenditure exceeding 1.3 billion now but credit is due even as we criticize them because the president has tried reeling in on non-essential travel among members of the executive we've equally seen him talk about cutting his travel budget by 500 million shillings to fund the special education sector. But the quest question rather still lingers in terms of return on investment. How much is Kenya benefiting from the frequent foreign travels? Most recently, the president spoke about looking for jobs for Kenyans abroad. And this are some of the sentiments that were shared in this regard in the course of the week. Let's listen in to what was shared before we listen in to our panelists. Nilikuwa naona juzi kiongozi wa upinzani analalamika ati anasema oh huyu Ruto watu wengi sasa wanapelekwa nje kufanya kazi. Kwani alikuwa anataka wabaki hapa Kenya wakingojea nini? <laughs> si tulikubaliana kazi ni kazi. Na bado sasa amelalamika mapema. Bado watu watatoka Kenya hii waende wafanye kazi nje kwa maelfu. Young people the new skills and knowledge that we need are being exported because the government cannot create jobs and the government sees it as an achievement it is the responsibility of our government to create jobs in the country when you have a whole president going running out there that is looking for jobs for people here something is terribly wrong already we are concluding negotiations with germany we are concluding negotiations with saudi arabia we are concluding negotiations with another eight countries on export of labor and the national youth service is going to be the central organization okay so those are sentiments by the president and the opposition leader in regards to the foreign travels and looking for jobs abroad dismiss your take on the export for labor issue because some argue that this is perhaps uh, pushing on brain drain that exporting labor is not the silver bullet for the unemployment crisis we have in the country how exactly do you look at this issue well over the last one year one can see that our president Ruto has been very keen on um, four things number one promoting our exports the exports is both uh, goods as well as services, which you're referring to as the labor or human uh, capital, and then promoting Kenya as an FDI destination. Now, when you talk about uh, labor, for instance, the gentleman on my left is a good teacher. He trains many journalists in Kenya. So he trains enough people to get jobs in Kenya. But those who do not get jobs in Kenya have got the opportunity to go and work for CNN, for BBC, for VOA, and any other international organization. <laughs> So I don't see anything wrong. And we're in the era of uh, the globalization of uh, production and marketing. So the world has become a global village. If you've got skills, you can deploy them in Kenya or you can deploy them uh, outside. 
So in my view, when the president, the deputy president, as well as the prime cabinet secretary, go to create opportunities for Kenyans outside, we should be very happy and give them a pat on the back. Specifically around our labor, countries like uh, the Philippines, they've invested heavily in sending out their top talent so that they send back uh, remittances. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a lot of Kenyans in the US, in UK, India, China, they make money, they send it back to Kenya, it gives us a lot of uh, gains in the Forex, uh, Forex department. So for me, I would uh, take a departure from what Mr. Raila Odinga is talking about, that uh, later the Kenya Kwanzaa administration creates opportunities for Kenyans locally and internationally. So if uh, they cut a deal with uh, Germany and Germany needs uh, welders and we can train the welders in Kenya, let's train them in masses we take them to Germany. Okay. If New Zealand or Australia, they need their nurses, and we can train nurses in Kenya, let's train them, take them abroad. But more important, position Kenya as an FDI destination. Interesting. And that is what uh, the president has been doing. In fact, uh, last week, Msaile Mdavadi had a meeting at Chatham House, mm -hmm. where the big boys from London wanted to know much more about Kenya's uh, economic uh, diplomacy. So, you know, he gave them uh, the pointers, and you saw the room people were happy. They gave him a standing ovation. They were very excited about what he was talking about. And, you know, for a long time, under President uh, Kenyatta, he, he had taken a laid-back seat. He was not very active at the international space, but President Ruto is. In fact, he's become so active, even on social media, some presidents, uh, I mean, people are comparing President Ruto to other presidents in the region, so during international events, they're asking where are our presidents when uh, President Ruto is having our, our lunch. Okay, so that's interesting. So despite the current economic turmoil we're facing as a country, the president should continue with his foreign trips, looking for more opportunities, yeah? Absolutely. And you know, that is the basics in business. Okay. Anybody who's gone to Strathmore University will tell you, if you're running a business and it's not giving you very good uh, returns, mm -hmm. Don't focus on uh, the bottom line cutting things. Go and get another bigger market. So in as much as, uh, say, we're having a challenge with our FDIs, All right. let the, our leaders go promote Kenya as an FDI destination. Okay. If you are not able to you know, get a new market for our teas and coffee, we cannot just sit on our hands and we say, what is Raila Odinga going to say about our international adventures? Let's go look for new markets for tea and coffee, whether it's going to be in the Middle East, whether it's going to be Nigeria, all over. In what Mr. Raila Odinga is supposed to be asking is, what is the return on investment? Okay. How soon are we going to see the return on investment on these trips? And again, you know, these things are not instant coffee or instant tea. Mm, exactly. It takes a while before you can build uh, relations. Okay. It takes a while for people to cut some deals. Although a few have been instant, for instance, NBA opened an office mm -hmm. a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Then there's conversation around uh, Moderna. Then there's Exim Bank of India yeah. that have already come to Kenya. Okay, well noted. So has been, a lot has been said about the president's trips. And in terms of return on investment, the government spokesperson recently said that two trillion worth of benefits in deals have been signed with foreign superpowers like UK, US and China. But there are those who still question the streets mentioning, you know, the country's economic woes. How do you view this? Well, uh, you know, I think there is, there, is, there is a sense in which even what the government spokesman is talking about is, is sort of opaque, so to speak. And I think that's, that's where the issue is. And if you compare what President Uru Kenyatta used to do and what President William Ruto is doing, uh, I think for President Uru Kenyatta it, it was quite clear that this is the country where he has gone to. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the deals that he has, uh, you know, signed. And they are put in the public domain, you know. Uh, this is what is coming in. These are the returns on investment. So every other time we saw President Uru Kenyatta go out, and of course, I mean, the number of trips he made are currently dwarfed by what the current president is doing. We actually used to see a very elaborate paper that is giving us a picture of everything that he has done, uh, which is contrary to what you are seeing today. You know, when a president goes out, you don't have to wait until the government spokesman speaks, you know. Uh, as, as, as recently as a few months ago, I think the president went to the Silicon Valley. Uh, to date, we are still waiting. In fact, he was at the Silicon Valley and the cabinet secretary in charge of um, uh, ICT and, and the digital economy was distributing uniform to Migori youth at uh, Sony Guest House. Mm -hmm. And we are yet to see, you know, what, what exactly came out, out of that. And then number two, you know, uh, 
it's, it's not a question of, you know, the foreign trips and the return on investment as such. For me, it's a question of what is the bigger picture. You know, it's easy to say that we are going to look for jobs for young men, you know, in this country, which is a good thing. And I think there are a number of families that have so many young men who are looking for jobs. And I think they would care the least where their sons and daughters get their jobs. Yeah. And even that return, you know, the remittances that they'll be making back to Kenya is such a big, big deal. But, you know, there are two sides to this coin. There is what Ray Lodinga is talking about, that a president should not, you know, come down to the level of gloating about looking for jobs for young people. The business of the government is to create that conducive environment where investors will have an opportunity to employ more, pay more taxes, and have more people come into the tax bracket. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense in which whatever Ray Lodinga is saying makes sense. Whatever the president says makes sense. But if we situate it broadly from a very neutral point of view yeah. and ask yourself, if uh, what Dismas is saying holds water, that we are training human resource and we have some of the best uh, in this country, but then we want to send them to other countries. The question is, what are they going to do in those countries? These are young men and women who are going to be productive in these countries. What would we rather have? Do we, would we rather sign deals that would tell these other countries like Germany, for instance, mm -hmm. that your manufacturing cent uh, sector is extremely big. And you see, most of these uh, developed countries, what happens is the time when they were giving tax incentives is in the past. So the cost of even manufacturing in the U.S. of manufacturing a Nike is very high. In Germany, of manufacturing a German machine, and they are very popular in Kenya, is extremely high. So if you produce human capital in Kenya and send them to Germany, it's a lose-lose situation for both Germany and, and Kenya. This but I can tell Yes, 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 yes. Mm. I mean, the, re the remittances are so small if you look at what we are doing. Like, we are going to manufacture things in Germany, and then we import them here. I mean, it, it, it doesn't favor... The balance of trade will eventually not favor us. Mm. Mm. The most prudent thing I would expect is find a way of creating jobs here. Sign those deals. Bring those multinationals. Let them manufacture here. The cost of manufacturing here would be far much cheaper compared to the cost of manufacturing there. Now, they're suffering issues to do with climate change. Our president is a champion of climate change in Africa. One of the ways of helping them, instead of selling them land around here for you know, carbon credit trading, bring their manufacturing companies here. There are so many in China. If you're signing deals with China, why are we helping China be a big export, uh, exporter of goods in China and make more Chinese richer, build capital? Yet, it is our young men and women who are going there. Some of these things are things that we can actually negotiate better. And I think the president is in a well-poised position to do that. If it was in the interest of this country, we need to break away from the structural imperialism where deals are signed that benefit the center nations and a few people in the periphery nations like Kenya. These are things that need to come back to this country. So if you ask me, yeah. uh, you know, we, we might celebrate, uh, you know, the crumbs that you're getting out of this deal. We might have Kenyans who are very happy that, you know, their sons and daughters are going to work in, you know, Germany, are going mm -hmm. to work in China. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bigger picture is they're not going because they need to go. They're going because circumstances in this country are forcing them to go. Because we refuse to create an enabling environment that would attract people who would employ them in this country. So, uh, uh, let me make three points. Yeah. Let's go to Tanzania. When Jakaya Kikwete was the president of Tanzania, people accused him of a lot of international trips. Uh, president Ruto is doing almost what Jakaya Kikwete used to do. As we have this conversation, uh, Tanzania is getting very impressive FDI numbers. Because Kikwete decided to go to the global level and position Tanzania. He even lobbied for so many Tanzanians to get international assignments, international jobs. That is number one. Number two, if you've got surplus nurses, would you rather the surplus nurse, assume my name is Nimora from Osocho, go to a market called Inyakoe and sell vegetables, or take her skills to New Zealand or Italy? You've spent a fortune training as a nurse in Kenya, and uh, there's surplus. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, teachers. If you've got surplus teachers, 
would you rather they drink changa the entire day or they go to Angola or another country to go and teach? So whatever Owila is indicating here is uh, he wants to frustrate uh, people's capacity to take advantage of globalization of markets and production. Now we're even talking about a visa free Africa <laughs> that the only thing you need to do is to have your Kenyan passport. Okay. If there's you an know, opportunity, just, if there's an opportunity in Ghana for a Kenyan, please go. Okay. And for me, I'd like us to come with a deliberate policy mm. of creating massive opportunities for Kenyans worldwide. Let's use, you know, we keep on using these examples. Use India as an example. The Prime Minister in the UK is of Indian origin. The World Bank President, Indian origin. If you go to the US, the tech industry is run by Indians. Why can't we do the same? Let's get Kenyans who want to take advantage of the world, go all over, so that at some stage, Indian has got a, now an African, a Kenyan Prime Minister, US has got a, a Kenyan President, like Obama, we have so many. Mm -hmm. So next time we have a G7, okay. the common denominator is Kenya. For instance, Owila here, <laughs> yeah. if Owila, Owila is a teacher at a university in Kenya, is he suggesting that uh, if he gets an offer from Harvard or Oxford, he will decline and he'll say, no, I want, to, I want to work next to my village. Go all over the world and conquer it and bring us the dollar. But the, bring issue, us the, the issue of world oh, oh, apologies, oh, oh, yes. Willa is raising. <laughs> he may soon be in the cabinet. <laughs> Who knows? The issue Willa is raising is about the work environment in the country perhaps being unattainable that we are forcing this young minds, this job seekers to seek opportunities abroad since there's no opportunity. Not that there's a surplus, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that there are few opportunities here. And it's the work of the government to create opportunities locally as well as regionally or internationally. Are we doing the necessary steps locally? Now, President, uh, the late President Moi opened up the education space in Kenya. And when Kibaki came, he buttressed it. We've got about, I think, the last count, about 70 universities in Kenya, okay. producing top talent. Okay. The responsibility of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration is to create opportunities for Kenya locally and internationally. So if they've created opportunities at an international level, I don't see why Willa wants to box someone. So you've been given the <laughs> option. You can either work in Kenya. If there is no opportunity in Kenya, mm. make your way to the international market. Actually, yeah, in my yeah, view, yes, another thing yes, that we need to do... No, the no, first no, thing no, I no, say... Let, 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 let me address the point. Okay. In fact, another thing that we now need to do, yeah. in my, my view, it's a policy which is very urgent. Compel Kenyans to learn another language outside English, to do French, Arabic, Portuguese, so that when they complete high school right. or the university, okay. they're ready for the global market. You know, this verse is misrepresenting what I said. First of all, I acknowledge the fact that getting opportunities is a good thing. And there are so many Kenyans who will appreciate any opportunity for their sons and daughters, or even themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. getting to work outside. Because all they need is to address their plight first. Yeah. But you know, you cannot say that you're exporting what you've not exhausted here. Take nurses, for instance. You are still struggling with universal access you know, to health care. So nurses are leaving this country. In fact, at some point they were stopped simply because we need more of them in this country. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they are leaving is very simple, deplorable conditions. Today, as we speak, the county government of Nairobi is actually in distress. People in the health sector are actually just wondering when will they get their pay. And then number two, you talk about training top talent. We have uh, many teachers. What Dismas does not understand is that the kind of high school he went to, even after the... Uh, the, 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 the NARC administration came with that transition, mm -hmm. is no longer the high school that we have today. Our high schools are bloated with students, with learners, and there are fewer teachers, extremely few teachers, you know. Uh, a teacher, a student at, yes, ratio. A, yes, yeah. teacher to student ratio is skewed, yeah. you know, and it disfavors the students. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Now, ask yourself, if you are to write a composition today in high school, by the time your teacher marks your composition and returns it, it is the end of the term. That one, Dismas does not know. But he wants us to take teachers to Lebanon, to take teachers to, 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 take, uh, teachers to other countries. Okay. And then number two, you know, some of these challenges then are transferred to the university level, where you have graduate students who can't write. But let me just say this. It is important for the president or the government of the day to find opportunities for Kenyans to make money, create wealth. But it is more important if that opportunity is found here in Kenya. He's also misrepresenting uh, the idea of globalization. Because the idea of globalization is interconnectedness, you know. And when you talk about interconnectedness, we are in this well-poised position where we can localize 
the global and globalize the local. But do you know what we've gone for? We are localizing, uh, we are globalizing the local. That we are taking our local people to the global level to support other economies. Mm -hmm. Yet we have an opportunity of localizing that technology that is global and bringing it here in Kenya to produce the best footwear for our sportsmen, oh, yeah. to produce the best cars globally. If it is produced here in Kenya, first of all, we'll get a lot of revenues beyond just the remittances that individuals will be making. And we'll have people employed in this country. At some point, this must knows, I wanted to be the member of parliament for Suna East, and my mom was asking me, you can go elsewhere in Nairobi and make it easy. I told him, if I can, the reason why I want to be a member of parliament is to serve my people. There is no reason why Kenya should be serving other industries. Mm -hmm. If we have leadership that is uh, cognizant of the plight of the people of this country, they can address it by bringing all that knowledge all that right. Kenyans are taking away in this country. And, and Uhila yes. stands a very chance of becoming an MP, which he must. Okay. But the duty of any government <laughs> is to create opportunities for exports, goods and services, and also promote your nation as an FDI destination. Mm. There are some people, because of their age, if you tell them there's a job in China today, they will not move. Because, you know, they've gotten to a certain age, they're in a certain comfort space. Okay. But if somebody wants to go, let them go. So if Uhila gets an offer from uh, the elite universities that are undergoing a crisis in the U.S., I don't know whether he'll say no or yes, because he wants to become an MP. But yes. those are opportunities we must create for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I, I will say it all because I want my knowledge to help Kenya. Okay. There Let's you see. go. We'll uh, <laughs> definitely see the test of time. Anyway, <laughs> government is broke. Those are not mm. my words, but the revelations of the man in charge of the public funds, the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Professor Njogunandongo, according to the Cabinet Secretary, who appeared before Parliamentary Committee on Finance and National Planning, the government is so stretched by debt that they have been paying salaries in arrears. This coming barely days after members of parliament vowed to disrupt activities if the national government constituency development fund funds are not released before recess, which was on Thursday, which has passed. Uh, well, according to most MPs, the money still hasn't been released. But let's listen to what has been mentioned in terms of the state of affairs, the economic affairs of the country. Listen. In. Getting adequate tax revenues. So you can imagine, in fact, uh, if the chairman can tell you, when you devour the development budget, it means that you remove the capacity for even future growth. So in a sense, we are struggling just to be on the same position. By the way, I can tell you, we are even having trouble with salaries. We are clearing salaries with arrears. Okay? You know, just imagine that. Hakuna mgoji wanaweza toka ICU, aede direct mpaka nyumbani. Kwanza, anapewa dawa, anapewa kwa machine, anaenda HDU. Anaka HDU, anatibiwa, anaenda ward. Anaka kwa ward, anatibiwa, anaenda nyumbani. Anaenda clinic, akikaa nyumbani, akikunywa soup, mpaka anakuwa sawa. Sasa hii uchumi tulikuta ICU, tumerekebisha, ikaenda HDU, tumengangana, sasa hiko kwa ward. Ikifika mwaka ujao, ataenda nyumbani. Sasa tunahabari ya kwamba mbei ya mafuta katika soko ya ulimwengu imerudi chini. Sasa natakane mwezi huu, wapunguze bei ya mafuta na shilingi 45 kwa lita hmm? sio ati, ati shilingi tano siki kumi peki yake arubaini na tano au hamsini kwa lita wanake bei ya mafuta merudi chini kabisa katika soko ya lomengu well, the ODM leader, Riley Odinga, just speaking before EPRA reviews the prices on the 14th of this month, taking effect on the 15th. But away from that, the earlier sentiments from the Deputy President and the Treasury Cabinet Secretary perhaps seem to be contradicting. Because according to the Deputy President, to metoka ICU, to ko HDU sasa. Next year, to takua word, and then we'll be good to go thereafter. But if you ask the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, we are broke. According to him, we are struggling to stay at the same position we are, were in. You know, we were already bad and we're struggling to stay in that position. So these contradictions between the members of the executive statements on a stable and optimistic economic situation we've had uh, from the men in charge of the executive. But from the men in charge of the funds, they 
paint a picture of a brook and a country that's struggling to pay its bills. Does this leave you with unanswered questions? Not at all. Actually, there's no contradiction the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Because look at the audience. Professor Njungu Nandugu was addressing members of uh, a parliamentary committee yes. that are, are assumed to have a certain uh, level of knowledge and understanding of the budget making process because they've just passed a supplementary budget to reallocate our resources. While the deputy president, I think, is addressing a, a general audience and is a gentleman given to using uh, idioms, proverbs to pass uh, all my points. But what Professor Ndumu had indicated uh, in black and white, which made a lot of sense, is that uh, for the last one year, they have been doing, uh, they have been reviewing policy mistakes from the Kenyatta administration, and they've just completed uh, correcting those mistakes. And then uh, as soon as uh, we start uh, another period, we come from uh, a time when there is no rain at all, and then all of a sudden there's too much rain, so now you're from two extremes. No water, too much water. Mm -hmm. And now that is the situation uh, is managing. And you must give credit to the administration for calling a spade a spade. That uh, if you're having a cash flow challenges, just tell Mora that we're having a cash flow challenge, give us another two years. And you recall Mr. Mdavad indicated at some stage that it's going to take about two years to recover. So you've done one year, then uh, they need to be given another one year. Now after two years, okay. If nothing has, uh, if the needle has not moved, mm -hmm. then now we'll go to the top of Mount Kenya or Kilimanjaro and look at President Ruto in the eye, as well as uh, the DP and say, what promises did you make? However, if you look at other sectors, like a food inflation, that one uh, for people who buy maize in a container called Gorogoro, they're beginning to see that our food inflation is going down. So when you're revising these things, don't expect, uh, like Willa does, instant, instant coffee or instant <laughs> tea. As you said, times above number. Okay, okay. And you know, when he goes to his village, he uh -huh. goes through Kisi, where there is exclusive uh, coffee called uh, Omosike. That Omosike you need to brew. But if you just want the normal instant coffee and instant tea, you will not enjoy that coffee. You will okay. not enjoy the tea. Mm -hmm. But after two years, if they've not delivered, then all of us will go to the top of Mount Kenya and we say, President Ruto, based on your promises, We've covered two years and we are not seeing progress. We now demand results. You know, I, I think for me it's not even a contradiction. I mean, if they were contradicting each other, I think it would be, be part of a good story. For me, it's total confusion and lack of clarity. You know, these two years that Dismas is talking about, I mean, uh, I wish there was, there, was, there was a picture of what Kenya will look like in two years, you know. Uh, I wish there was a pathway to all these, you know, policies that they've put in place uh, and a pathway that takes us to this, you know, solid uh, recovery place. You know, whatever the deputy president is talking about, I think they are so abstract, they are so all over the place because on the one hand, uh, you have the, bit, the, the president who is talking about economic recovery that will stabilize this country. Then you have his deputy who is talking about, I mean, we are still in, uh, in uh, uh, is it uh, high dependent HDU? We are still in HDU. Next yeah. year we'll be in the general ward, then you'll get out. And you see, the process is so long, based on his analogy, you, even when you go home, you'll still be taking drugs, you know. So one is saying that we are still in a dire situation. Another one is giving a picture of, I've stabilized the country. This country is lucky because I'm the president at this particular time things would have been worse, mm -hmm. and that's the best they can do. You know, at their worst, they keep invoking the, pre the name of uh, President Turu Kenyatta, essentially what Dismas is also talking about. It is as if before the election, we were in a deep hole, you know. But if you just, you know, uh, flash back to a few months of the election, the situation was not this bad. So this, this deception that they're giving Kenyans, that we, you know, we were doing extremely badly off, I mean, it is a creation of their own narrative, and I think they are, they, are, they are enjoying their narrative more than the reality. And then number two, the same, same people are telling us that we can't pay salaries. The same, same people are telling us that we are still in high dependency unit. Are the same, same people who have sneaked in a bill in parliament mm -hmm. to increase the wage bill? You know, are the same, same people who have created offices of their spouses are the same same people who came into this government with an office that is unconstitutional that had to be discussed at the national dialogue convention for it to be put in the constitution 
an office plus the office of the spouse that is taking in a lot of taxpayers' money. Then, if you retreat a bit, because they're saying that we are in this hole and we cannot continue digging, you know, we have to get out of the hole. So we have to live within our means, mm -hmm. we have to service our loans. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Treasury CS is on record saying that a lot of money that, 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 that we are collecting from uh, revenues are going into paying loans, up to 67% okay. going into paying loans. But they're also taking loans. So what is that? They're digging. Digging okay. more, mm -hmm. servicing more loans. But as if that situation is not uh, bad enough, you also realize that other than uh, the... the, 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 the Kwakma that they are putting Kenyans on, there is lavish expenditure. Mm. So even if you were to stop digging, you know, there is nothing we'll achieve if they don't cut down on expenditure. You know, to a greater magnitude. Now, the problems that, that, that uh, the Treasury CS is talking about, these are problems that were preempted. You know, and why am I saying they were preempted? These are things that Kenyans saw. You are taxing Kenyans more. You've raided, uh, you know, pay slips of, of most Kenyans. You've come up with a levy called the housing levy as a very good policy. And then you realize that this is a good policy by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. What we need to do, we need to enforce it. You take it to parliament. It sails through. Mm -hmm. Even members of parliament whose constituents are complaining about uh, this uh, Finance uh, Act of 2023 were happy to pass it. Right now, what is happening? Every Kenyan has cut down on the expenditure simply because there is no money. You look at, at, at the, 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 the businessmen who are owed by the government and the county governments. It's out of this world. So there is no money circulating in the economy. So they mm -hmm. ought to have known mm -hmm. that revenues were going to go down because of their punitive tax measures. Then the latest and the most shocking that you have a regime that for all intent and purposes is appealing a decision by the people who gave them the power to rule. 16 petitions against the housing levy that was consolidated into one went to court and the court declared it unconstitutional. They went and appealed, got a stay order. A government appealing against something that the citizenry does not want. Mm -hmm. And then they are bright okay. enough, uh -huh. they are bright uh -huh. enough yeah. uh, to look at the ruling that was made and then they want to sanitize that ruling in parliament so that they cover all the loopholes. And you ask yourself, what is this drive to tax Kenyans more? And to what extent are they going to tax Kenyans? Yet the reality is very clear. You tax more, you collect less. And, and even as you come in, because he's raised quite a couple of important issues, and I'd like you to perhaps expound on uh, the issue about the Chief Administrative Secretaries, because the National Government Administration Laws Amendment Bill 2023 was tabled in Parliament. We might see the reintroduction, if it sails through, the reintroduction of CASs. Mm. You, you just mentioned that they're speaking as it is. The government is broke and it's a pat on their back. But on the other side, we're not moving as if we're broke. If we are seeking to add more mm. uh, seats, you know, CASs, there's no cap, by the way, yeah. on the number of CASs that might mm. be appointed by the president. I mean, you know, the way KRA is following up on people's <laughs> social media activity, that there are people who are billionaires <laughs> on social media, but in terms of paying taxes, it's mm. zero. Isn't that perhaps uh, a little bit comparable to the mm. government? We are broke, yes, but in terms of how we are moving as a government... We're living large. Uh, we're living large, yeah? Yeah, before addressing the issue of the CS, yeah. Ohile has committed a murder. Let me address that issue first before the evidence disappears. Okay. He is saying that uh, the current administration is taking loans in truckloads. Now, what he I'm did not tell you... That's data. Yeah. But what he's not telling you is that uh, President Kenyatta's ad administration had an insatiable appetite for commercial debt. Kenya Kwanzaa is not taking commercial debt. Kenya Kwanza is taking concessionary debt from IMF and World Bank. It's not from uh, commercial banking, which is normally very expensive. Mm. Secondly, the portfolio of our debt is on the rise because of the forex fluctuation, that our shilling is losing, uh, it's getting bitter every single day. Yeah. Actually, for parents who are paying for studies or something abroad, 
when you look at the shilling today is 159 you start scratching your head you may not even need a barber because the scratch alone mm -hmm. your 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 head disappears right. mm -hmm. again the current governor for central bank says the previous governor made the policy mistakes that are the the kenyan shilling was uh there's this word that are, you know babysitting that it was something artificial now they they have left the vagaries of uh, the market so it's uh there is that fluctuation again that's not something that you can uh, blame the the current administration and, and i know will has got capacity to maneuver around these uh, numbers and make everybody believe that in fact we are in a very horrible space mm -hmm. when uh, president uh, ruto took office Gashagwa made a statement, the deputy president made a statement at Kasarani, and people said, well, I mean, what did he say? He said, we have gone to the store and there is no money. Mm -hmm. So, the current administration, they are reviewing, they are cleaning tables. Now, let's come to this germane issue that uh, you've raised about the CIS. What is the duty of a leader? A leader, number one, is supposed to create the overall picture, the vision of where they want the organization to go. Mm -hmm get talent mm -hmm. to actualize uh, that vision and allocate financial resources so the president in his wisdom says every cabinet secretary needs a cis so in initially there was a procedure which was uh, stopped by the by the courts and now they will brought amendments to the act that you've read which is going to be subjected to the people's representatives mm -hmm. at the national assembly mm -hmm. so the people's representative at the national assembly we love the last word. If they think the position for CIS needs to be part of the deal, they will say yes. If they think it's not part of the deal, they will say no. You cannot blame uh, the president for saying that every cabinet secretary needs uh, an assistant. And in any event, when you're talking about this m amount of money, it's not as if that it's going to be so huge that, that it will have a material effect in the general accounts. The, this gentleman has just been saying that you need enough talent you need enough capital to run uh, these organizations so these people are going to to get these roles and i don't see anything wrong with that however what we must do is for anybody who's been given a public position we must establish what are their key performance indicators because we know there are a number of uh, public servants who are not held liable for the performance of their office you said you are going to discuss about it later on but uh, there's been a power blackout in kenya today mm. a few minutes ago mm -hmm. i'm wondering whether there's somebody who is going to be penalized for that? Whether there is somebody who will go to the office tomorrow and he will be told, boss, pole, pole, pole. Now we are having a crisis meeting, we'll call you, and somebody is going to face discipline. Because part of the tragedy in Kenya, people can literally commit murder. And they whistle to a bar, they go and have pepper steak and whiskey, and nothing happens. Okay. There so, must be consequences uh -huh. for errors of both omission and, and commission. commission. So, in short, what you're saying, and allow me to echo the words of Ndindi Nyoro. He said that the salaries of the CASs are negligible. Others add, I think that's Beatrice Elachi, who said the CASs will be, taying ta will be paying taxes. So, it's a win-win for the government either way. So, you don't question the timing of this particular move, bearing in mind the high public wage bill that we're currently dealing with as a country. I will not go with the Didi Nyoro's okay. uh, explanation yeah. or even uh, Elachi's. Mm -hmm. Actually, now Elachi's explanation looks a bit uh, mm -hmm. voodoo or ridiculous. That let's give everybody a job and then they're going to pay taxes. No. <laughs> In my view, we should be asking ourselves when these people get roles, what will be their contribution to baking this cake? You remember at some stage the DP indicated that uh, when he wants to meet with the cabinet secretaries, mm -hmm. he, he can't find them. Others land at JKI, if there's no blackouts, they change, there's a change of dress, then they go to another place. He said at some stage he was going to open an ASK show, but he couldn't find the minister for agriculture. Mm -hmm. So my view is, you know, right now it's very fashionable, wherever there's any policy pronouncement by the administration, to say, ah, wangalia, tena. Because, you know, everybody right now, Will has demonstrated that it's very fashionable to criticize everything. Mm -hmm. But let's ask ourselves, what do they bring to the table? And what did we see CAS is bringing to the table during the uh, Uhuru administration? They were mostly used perhaps to cut and raise for the cabinet and secretaries and events, <laughs> speeches and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of questions in terms of the efficacy of this position. Yeah, yeah. those know. are the questions we must ask. And when the National Assembly invites people to present their views, mm -hmm. I would expect a will here to go and present this position and say that our CAS are going to pay them, um, I don't know, 
maybe it's 800,000. Yeah. So if you're going to be 50, it's this amount of money. Okay. This money, you should use it to uh, set up a facility in Migori to increase my probability of becoming an MP, something like that. <laughs> Instead of just saying that they're a waste of time. Interesting. So we're talking a lot about Parliament, uh, Hezbon, and I'd like us to shift focus just briefly because of time and talk about the control of budget wars. Of course, there's a court case, sub judice, whatnot. We can't talk too much about it. But the political angle of this whole issue, I did start <laughs> with you because of obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, your tribes mates seem to think that this is a political uh, vendetta, that she's being targeted in one way or the other. And we're talking about a holder of an independent office, number one. Number two, we're talking about a role that she was cleared for before she got to that role in terms of, you know, certificate of good conduct and parliament vetting her as well. So at the end of the day, is this an egg on the face of parliament and all those other institutions that are gatekeepers in terms of those who assume public offices, especially independent offices? Well, I, I think there's a lot. There's a lot that that uh, is is not in the public domain around uh, the whole issue of the control of budget, uh, and it doesn't it doesn't paint uh, the regime in any sort of glory for the simple reason that this is coming hot on the heels of the pronouncements he made. Uh, she made about you know budgeted corruption. Uh, I even wrote about budgeted corruption in one of my columns because it's, it's such a big thing, you know. Uh, and, and you'd expect, you know, that, that that ought to have been a very serious conversation taken up, you know, uh, by, by the top echelons of, of, of this regime. And it's, it's, it's whether it is, it, is, it is a very genuine uh, case they have against the control of budget or not, the perception that is outside there can easily be traced to the statement that she made. And I think the tragedy of, 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 of uh, our, our politics and, and, and being a public servant at the highest level is that any small thing can be politicized. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you're not even so sure whether it is witch hunt because uh, MPs from the Omogusi community have come out saying that it is uh, witch hunt. And, you know, they've broken ranks from both sides of the political divide. They are coming out to defend her. And then you listen to, you know... Uh, a few other MPs who've taken uh, the opposite uh, view that this is not witch hunt. And the issues that they're advancing, you juxtapose with what she's accused of. And you realize that there's a lot, you know, besides just the reason why she's been accused. Because people are saying that it is because of uh, things that happened almost four years before she assumed office. You know, she was a director, she was part and parcel of a circle somewhere, you know. But there are people who are saying that the reason why she is facing the charges is because of the activities that took place just during the transition. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you really can't tell, you know, what, what the real question is. And I think the, the, the problem that I see there as someone who has followed the Kenyan politics is that if indeed it is true that uh, the reason why they are coming for her or the reason why she's been arraigned, is because of things that happened before she was cleared by parliament, then it is unfortunate be because then it underscores this belief that in this country every other top constitutional position is given to someone who has something that can be used against them at some particular point, Could which is very, yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Th there must be something that we can hold this person by. And I think that is very unfortunate. But be it as it may, uh, I think the best thing to do in the current situation is to allow the law to take its course. Uh, people who have opinions around this, you know, are uh, better off uh, shutting up and letting us see the truth as it is through the due process of the law. You know, it is one thing to have, uh, you know, one side of the Omogusi politicians say that this is witch hunt. And then it is another thing to have others who are saying, that we are going to clean the mess that has been there in the past. Why can't they just keep quiet so that we see evidence that is adduced in court, the due process? Because in Kenya today, where we see it, you know, you, you, you might defend someone and end up with an egg on your face. <laughs> you might support someone and end up with an egg on your face. Yeah. So, and, and you see, our institutions are such that you know the process and you can easily predict how the process is going to be compromised. And the moment you have politicians speak so much, then what we are seeing is influences that are coming in 
to compromise the process, muddy the water, and eventually you won't even know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. People will run away with witch hunt. People okay. will run away with uh, she's culpable. And then you don't see her being charged. So many cases that we've seen in this country okay. of people being arraigned, you know, in, in, in very grandiose manner. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they just disappear from the public mm -hmm. domain. And you ask yourself, so what is it that really happened? It is because politicians come in and politicize even the most serious things. And people take them to be very flippant, yet they are very serious. And I think this is one of them. So but, let the full But, but just, just, a, the just allow me to respond to the CAS issue. Now, I, I think any government that comes to power has the right to constitute you know, the structures within the law the way they want. Uh, including that, that, that bill that has gone to parliament. It is within the right of Kenya Kwanzaa to do that which would make them deliver on the promises that they made to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. The challenge that we have today is that they don't seem to be speaking from something that gives Kenyans some sort of confidence. That amount of money that Honorable Ndini Nyore is saying is negligible creates a perception that this is indeed what this government is all about. It's a very grandiose spendthrift government that does not care about the plight of the common monarchy. What they need to know is that that office of the CAS is not as important, you know, as the, 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 the CBK best lending rate that has moved from 10.5 to 12.5. This must is saying here that things are becoming good. They are mending the problems of the past regime. They're not. I mean, if the base rate moves from 10.5 to 12.5, what does that mean? It means that the cost of credit is going up. Right. Mm -hmm. That office of the CAS is not as important as a government that is telling us that they will release CDF so that kids can go to school. That now we've been reduced as a country to, 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 to a situation where parents depend on CDF for their kids to go to school. It doesn't make sense. This is, the, 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 this is, this is a regime that the hustlers voted knowing that it would make their life easy. It is not a regime that we voted for thinking that we'll become beggars waiting for CDF so that we send our kids to school. Okay. What this must does not know is that okay. when President Uru Kenyatta was still in power, the cost of taking our kids to primary school was fairly cheap. Right now it has increased by between 25 to 35 percent. Just the cost of taking kids to school. Mm -hmm. That is what is facing us in January. So which one is more important? Constituting the government and giving CISs jobs? And you know, one CIS might get 800,000 but they come with a contingent of almost eight people mm, okay. who will cost taxpayers All right. money. All right. uh, allow me to address an important point that uh, Owila has uh, raised here. That uh, for the control of budgets, and I know we can't go to the merits, there is an accusation of something she did while she was a member, a director of Assassin Circle. Sure. And then there's now the issue of around uh, Telecom Kenya cell. So those are two different issues. Mm -hmm. One, before she took office, and another one when uh, she has taken office. But uh, where I agree with uh, Willa in total is this um, unacceptable appetite by politicians that when a public servant of rank from your village is being accused of anything, the people from uh, that county from the village mm. will come and say, but to wait. So if it's a, a Kisi man, all the Kisi MPs, if it's a, a lawyer, all the lawyer MPs, mm -hmm. if it's law just like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, how come? It's not the entire National Assembly or the entire Senate which comes up to stand up and say, wait a minute, this public servant of rank is being harassed. Why is it that everything, they look at it from um, a tribal perspective, creating the impression that uh, this uh, public servant of rank is being forced because she comes from a particular community. Instead of, uh, as Will has indicated in black and white, instead of looking at the merits, why can't they allow the judicial system to take its course? Because this idea that somebody is in issue and then all of a sudden there's a news conference, people are, you know, banging tables, mm. you know, causing messages and saying, wait a minute, what is this, what is happening, this is unacceptable. I, I don't think that is uh, part of their fundamental role. Okay. They should allow the judicial system to take a process. And then also Willa indicated that the government has appealed over a certain case. You know, in Kenya, you have the magistrates, High Court, Court of Appeal, and Supreme Court. Yeah. So if a party is aggrieved, they can go all the way to the top. I don't see anything wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think this, you know, I mean, okay. anyone has, has the right here. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it's fairly weird that this is what Kenyans want, but the government is appealing against it. That is my point. That they have the right to appeal, but 
you know, it, it defeats the common decency of a government that is serving public interest. It is, a, it is in the interest of so many Kenyans, employers, employees, salaried, whose, uh, tax, whose uh, salaries are being levied, and even guys who depend on black tax from these salaried employees <laughs> who are now having a reduced amount that they're taking home. Mm -hmm. Everyone, if you walk around the street, I don't know where these cabinet secretaries and the, the, the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs walk, walk around the street, if there is one thing that people hate this government for, it is the housing levy. Well, they are trying to anchor it in law as well. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. A lot happening on the floor of the house. But gentlemen, as we finalize, we have the Jamhuri Day celebrations coming forth the end of the year. This, I think, will be the last edition of Checkpoint before we break for the Christmas and New Year's holidays. Perhaps a reflection of your year 2023. What stood out for you in the course of the pursuit for the best in governance in the country? What stood out for you even as we await for the celebrations on Tuesday and EPRA to review prices on, is it Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for EPRA, the prediction is out that it's coming down. Yeah. Ray Lodinga says it should Question be is by, by, by 50 bob, yeah. while uh, Insider says it's going to be by 10 bob. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's, uh, it's, it's coming, coming down. down. But, but for me, uh, I mean, given, the, given what I do for a living from an international perspective, I'm very happy that uh, the, the administration, our leaders have taken the path of ensuring that Kenya is a very key player from a geopolitical space that uh, Kenya has regained its uh, position in the region. That, uh, you, uh, in your opening remarks, you said uh, Kenya has hosted about 25 presidents which in my view is a good thing. Our economic diplomacy is going to the next level. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd like to encourage this administration, like what Musele Mdavadi did at Chatham House. Mm -hmm. If there's another meeting where you are addressing people who have money, who have dollars, who have capacity, let's attend all those meetings. But ensure that... Uh, you, you remember there was a complaint about uh, countries, the number of uh, people went to COP28. Uh, yeah. I think there was a country in Nigeria which was accused of having... Uh, you know, it was a truckload, you know, a big truck, like the military truck carrying everybody. That we only carry people who are going to deliver for Kenya, people who got capacity and competence. All right. And then also, I'd like to congratulate Rail Odinga for participating in the NADCO conversation. Because, you know, there are people who take Rail as water to the bank. So when you tell them, let's go to the streets, they will not even ask him why. You know, he, he, when he says jump, they don't ask uh, why they say ask how okay. high yeah but by having that conversation and saying that uh while there are a few things in these reports that i don't agree with okay but in principle i'm going to support it there are a number of uh, key things here so if we do that then it means you are placing a huge premium on our economic stability and political stability that way everybody goes home a very happy man and then number two also okay. to congratulate Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. he said a few days ago that he's going to offer constructive uh, criticism to this administration using other strategies instead of going to the streets. So I'm hoping it's going to be policy conversations so that there's going to be ideas cross-pollination. When Kenya Kwanza says that we want to export uh, labor to Israel or China, mm -hmm. he says, no, we can't export. Mm -hmm. Let's create opportunities in Kenya. But he, gives, but he gives a framework. Oh, okay. The idea of just going to the top of Mount Kenya and criticizing <laughs> everything without giving a, a policy alternative doesn't uh, make sense. Okay. Yeah, B but all in all, the, ev all leaders in Kenya, they need to know that uh, they've got very serious political capital. They've got a lot of influence over Kenyans, and every single word which comes out of their mouth All right. would uh, make somebody have a meal, or it would even cause a death. Okay. So it's important for them to realize that. Awila, finally. Well, I, I think for me, two things have stood out. Uh, one of the key things, I think, was, was the, the, the bombers, NADCO, uh, you know, coming together of both, uh, you know, the Kenya Kwanzaa team and... and, and uh, the Azimio team, I think it, it sort of brought the country together. We, we, we saw the, the economic indicators of what it did to our economy, which was a big thing. And I think uh, credit to both uh, President William Ruto and Raila Odinga for allowing you know, that process to be shepherded by Kimani Chungwa and uh, uh, you know, His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we are seeing pathways for where we are going. You know, the contentious issues that they did agree on are very clear. And I think those ones can be dealt with. But I think the pathways on the things that they agreed on, I mean, are seriously leading us to a space where Kenyans can, can make, a, uh, you know, serious decisions. Uh, number two, I think uh, one of the key 
uh, things I saw in, 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 in our political space was, you know, the emergence of uh, female governors who've distinguished themselves. I think in the rankings that we've seen, they've, they've, they've distinguished themselves as performers, mm -hmm. you know, led by uh, Gladys Wanga, who has done uh, amazingly well, according to the indicators. And then we have uh, Ker uh, Anwai Guru in Kirinyaga. Mm -hmm. I still celebrate the fact that she's creating, uh, you know, a health city in Kirinyaga and she's built, you know, a state of the heart uh, health facility there. Working quietly, I mean, she's, she's departed from the Anwai Guru that we knew that was always in the media. But I think if, if we, you dig deep, you realize that she's among the few female governors. And not just Anwai Guru and Gladys Wang. I think uh, the data that, that is outside there shows that Cecil Mbarire, Gladys Wanga, Anwai Guru, they're doing extremely well. Uh, but those are the only two things I can say, uh, okay. positive highlights for the year for me from the political front. But I also have, in my, in my own opinion, I also have a suggestion going forward. I mean, uh, the last 18 or so months have not been very easy for, for most Kenyans. I mean, things have moved from worse to extremely worse, and there is no clarity. There is no gleam of hope. If there is a tunnel where we are with this Kenya Kwanzaa regime, we are not even seeing flashes of light coming you know, inside this tunnel. Okay. And I think one thing they can, they need to reward Kenyans. I mean, it's been lose, lose, lose for so many Kenyans for so long. If they just let go of the housing levy, that is one. Just let, I mean, lose for once, you know, no. the housing levy. I think they'll be giving Kenyans, you know, a, a great pri uh, present for, for, for the new year. And then number two, and I think this is, this is affecting As almost all, yeah, yeah. almost all sectors, mm -hmm. including the media pending bills. If there's anything they can do about pending bills because we need to have money circulate in the economy. If there's anything the national government and the county governments can do. I know there was, there was a task force that was put in place led by the former uh, was it the Auditor General. Yeah. If there's anything they can do to expedite that process, that will be another New Year gift that they can give Kenyans. Please, please give it 30 seconds. <laughs> and you'll thank me for this. Uh, again, Willa, today, uh -huh. when he's not discussing politics, when he comes to economics, yeah. he hits the high notes. <laughs> the issue of our pending bills is critically important, especially in the media space in Kenya. When a South African politician wants to make a statement, they come to Nairobi. From Uganda, they come to Nairobi. So Kenya enjoys a very vibrant media. Okay. So it's incumbent on uh, the administration to support the Kenyan media by addressing that little matter of the pending, pending bills. bills yeah. Because uh, most media houses, the last time I spoke to a news editor, he was actually, he told me the media houses in Kenya are bleeding on account of the pending bills. So if there's anything which needs to be given priority is the pending bills. Because it's because of uh, the free media we have in Kenya, that even, uh, I think we've got the highest concentration of correspondence in the entire of Africa, more than South Africa, more than Nigeria, because of this space. Mm -hmm. So the administration should really review on this issue of the pending bills, I don't know whether it's through the government advertising agency. Yeah. So the journalists in Kenya stop yawning. They start getting a, you know, we go back to normal. Because right now things are a bit, I mean, people understand Kimi Umana, so things come back to order. Nabia, mm -hmm. they are also adjunct lecturers, eh? Yeah. So that pending bill, it's not just journalists. <laughs> I, I know adjunct <laughs> lecturers outside there are owed a lot of money. And if there's anything, anything the government can do. As well. Yeah, as well. Uh, well, you've had a couple of requests. I hope they definitely sail through, hoping for better tidings in the new 2024 year. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Hezbo Nawila, communication strategist and Dismas Mokua, political risk analyst. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Enjoy the end of your year. Looking forward to more discussions. Allow us to call it a night right here on Checkpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're adequately informed. Have yourself a fantastic start to the week. My name is Jesse Rogers. Good evening.